Hi guys, I'm ready to talk about E3 for a little bit. I wanted to do something a little different this year, didn't want to do just sort of my gut reaction, and I didn't want to go through and do just kind of a line-by-line -line news report of E3, because there are hundreds of videos like that, and you probably watched it anyway, so I don't need to tell you what happened. Um, I'm going to do this not as trying to be uh, you know, an objective, like talk about how the, it's going to affect the industry, it's going to be completely 100% just my very personal opinion of what I saw, just what I personally liked, didn't like, uh, go through each conference a little quickly. I wanted to separate a couple videos. This one's going to be all the ones that I knew going in weren't going to be sort of my, my big dogs. I was really most hyped to see what's going to happen with Sony, what's going to happen with Nintendo, and everyone else it was more of I was very curious to see, and I want to talk a little bit about those to begin with. Uh, first of all, to me overall, it, E3 kind of opened with a bit of a thud, uh, especially over the weekend. EA wrote some notes for some specific things I want to remember to talk about for each conference, and I don't have anything written down for EA because zero interest. There, I knew going in, though, that I wasn't going to be super interested in, so it wasn't you know a disappointment, and I do think overall it was an okay conference. So a few awkward moments with some uh, presenters, but it wasn't terrible, which wasn't great, and there was, there was just no personal interest for me. I wasn't I'm not into sports games at all. Um, I really don't have an interest in a new Battlefront. Yeah, I just I played the first two on PS2 and Xbox, and I'm good with that. I don't really need new ones, so there wasn't really anything going in, and there weren't any big super surprises, and there weren't any big sort of like thud moments to really catch my attention. It was just kind of like okay, it happened, whatever. Then moving on to Bethesda, and there was no point to it. That should have been a little bit of a Nintendo Direct style live stream thing. I don't know why they did this outdoor event much later at night. I didn't watch it till the next morning because it started way too late uh, for me in my time zone. And there was nothing really new. I feel like, was there anything announced there that we didn't already know about? I feel like I knew about everything that was shown, um, it, with the exception of I didn't know about that there was going to be a new Wolfenstein, but with the exception of Wolfenstein, everything else just seemed kind of like, okay, you know, whatever, and there wasn't a whole lot shown, and then the new Wolfenstein Looks okay, not super interested, but it was just kind of, again, even on a lower scale than, than EA, Bethesda, I was actually curious about, like, well, what's going to be here? Maybe it'll be something that'll surprise me. Just really nothing. So it was just kind of, I don't know, I feel like it was almost a waste of time, I want to say. Um, and then finally, though, the next day we move into something that I was really curious about. I want to learn more about um, the Scorpio. I want to know what's happening with Microsoft, with Xbox, how they're going to challenge the PS4 and the very fast rise of the Switch and what's going to happen in the future. And Xbox in general, you know, I was, I got into the original Xbox 360, I wasn't really into, I got it just for some exclusives like Lost Odyssey and that type of thing, and I don't own an Xbox One, and I'll go right in and say what I was hoping to see from this conference was to see not only them finally getting some games in the general sense, I wanted to see a reason to own one. I mean, I the chance of me ever buying one is like next to nothing, but like I wanted to see not just what's happening in the industry, but I wanted them to give me a reason to like at least consider buying an Xbox One. Like show me, give me some incentive, give me some reason. Give me, I'm really excited to see what the Scorpio is going to be, what that holds for the future. And I kind of got that, they're moving in the right direction, but the big problem I had overall with the whole conference, and they went overboard with the, like almost every game, exclusive, saying right in the beginning, also on PC, just pretty much everything is also on PC, some of them are, are timed exclusives that are going to go to the PS4 and things like that later, there are very few real exclusives, there are I think I said around 20 or so console exclusives, meaning they're exclusive as far as consoles to the Xbox One and then also on PC, but I think overall with the, the Xbox One is I don't see a reason to own one because just about everything on it that looks even remotely interesting you can also get on PC and you only really need a half decent PC you don't need a giant gaming rig you know to get the obviously the best performance you need a really nice gaming rig but just a half decent PC in your home you can run that so it's kind of for me I don't really see a reason I need something specific and exclusive and it just it doesn't have that and the it, it, it was a good conference though. I will say overall it was it was fairly entertaining and they did show some good stuff and they really were pushing games, they really were giving a nice like presentation. They were really trying to give reasons for those people that 
do have an Xbox One to continue to be excited about the future of Xbox um, and definitely trying to give reasons to people who don't have a really good capable PC or aren't PC gamers a reason to get an Xbox One if you look at it from that perspective. They did a, a really good job. I do think it was one of the better conferences overall. Um, it didn't really sway me into getting one, but it, it did have some, a good presentation. I really liked uh, the presentation with Forza. Not always something I'm interested in, but the whole idea of a new Porsche being unveiled and on E3 stage. and like It's cool. It was, again, the Xbox conference was a lot of stuff where it was I'm not super personally interested, but I can see why some people would be, and it, it was kind of cool to see some of the stuff. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, the, I really like the Egyptian aesthetic of it. I like the idea of give, going back and giving an origin story. I do wish, it's kind of, uh, it's, uh, it's a little stereotypical. I really was hoping, if they're going to do a beginning origin story, why didn't they go back further? And like, I would love to see um, something like Babylonian mythology, like something along those lines. Egyptian's so overused, and I think that kind of falls into, again, why I don't really like the, the Assassin's Creed series. I like the idea of it, but I played the first two and just couldn't really get into it. Uh, but this one, it looks really good, and I do think if you're a fan of the series, this one's probably going to turn out to be a decent game. It looks it looks good, but it's just not something that interests me too much. Uh, a couple different ones there. Uh, the Last Night, Code Vein looked pretty good. Uh, Code Vein, it looks like um, a really cool very action-heavy JRPG, and it looks pretty decent. So again, there are a couple things there that it's like, okay, if you do own an Xbox One, there's some good stuff coming out. Just nothing that for me made me want to buy one. Sea of Thieves um, looked pretty decent if you're into that type of thing. Uh, Super Lucky's Tale looked okay, but it was cool to see something like that, because so much in a lot of these conferences, even ones I'll talk about later, even like, like Sony and that kind of stuff, there's so much just darkness and seri seriousness and grittiness and it, Super Lucky's Tale didn't look um, particularly amazing but it was nice to see something like that. I feel like that type of just colorful fun gaming is has kind of become the realm of, if you're not Nintendo, it's become the realm of indie games and I feel like um, it's good to see something like that at least show up on the E3 stage, something a little different and colorful. Uh, there was also uh, Crackdown 3. <laughs> I don't know, I have very mixed opinions on that presentation with Terry Crews. It was kind of funny, kind of just cringy, like I don't know, it was the whole, it was not one of my favorite parts. Um, a couple neat things about the Scorpio, I'm going to call it for now. Um, that was the main interest for me, aside from just seeing what games are coming out. And they did a really good job presenting that, and they were um, really showing what it could do from a technical standpoint as far as you know, what is in this thing, what, what is in this box, and it's really interesting and fascinating, but my thing is, you have to be such a specific person for it to be a viable purchase, no matter what the price, and we'll talk, talk about the price later, but if you're not someone who is heavily, heavily into very modern gaming, and you have a 4K TV, if you have if you're both of those things, then this is a system for you that you're going to find use out of, but I feel like if you're not either one of those things, there's really no reason whatsoever to get that over an Xbox One S. And the other issue I have is how much of a difference is it really going to be, even if you have a 4K TV, and again, that's something where you have to have that to really make it worth it, I think. And is that difference worth the price of the upgrade? And I just don't feel like it is at this point, and I think, for me, by the time there is enough of a difference to where really you're really utilizing and pushing the power of the Scorpio, we'll call it for now, by the time you get to that point, you're going to have to get rid of the idea that games are going to be compatible with all versions of the Xbox and just utilize a little bit more of an upgrade in the Scorpio. I feel like eventually to actually use the power of, of this new console, you're going to have to not hold it back by making it compatible with everything, and that's going to be an issue in the future. And and I, but the other thing is, until you get to that point, I don't really see the point of the upgrade for a minor visual, minor or minor performance upgrade. Nothing that I don't think it's worth the price tag of a whole new system to play the same games, looking and performing slightly better if you also have the right equipment. And going into that too, well, again, it's a cool system, but 
$4.99 and the name reveal. Those are the two things here. I hate the name. I hate Xbox One in general. I think that's a terrible name. I think that's, that is right below the Wii U as far as terrible console names that are confusing to non, like, real gaming consumers and are just really bad. And I get the idea of trying to make it, you know, Xbox, the Xbox One X, the Xbox. Okay, whatever, but I still think it's a stupid name. And I, you know, and I do think it's going to be a harder sell to a lot of uh, more general consumers or people just getting into the system, Xbox One X, Xbox you know, One S, and I don't like the name, uh, and Scorpio sounded cool, like I was really surprised, I actually thought they were going to stick with that, uh, a lot of times it's a very obvious like code name, it's not what it's going to be called or whatever, but Scorpio I thought was, it was, it was cool and something that differentiated it and stood out a bit, and you could have some cool marketing things with that, but anyway, the price, 500 bucks uh, US. It's not, unre it's not unrealistic and it's not unexpected given the tech that is in this thing uh, and it's something I can see dropping in a year or two the price a bit or getting bundled with games and that kind of thing. But in saying that, even though it's not unreasonable and not unexpected, I think it's going to be another huge barrier holding it back when you're releasing, you know, is it worth double the price of an Xbox One S, a system that's going to play pretty much the same, the same library of games. Is it worth doubling the price to get some visual and performance upgrades? Is it that really worth it? And if you're and if you're just getting into it, you don't own an Xbox One, um, is that worth the extra purchase? And if you already have, you know, an older Xbox One or Xbox One S, is that worth the upgrade? You know, that's a huge leap for some minor performance differences. And I think that's all. That's going to be something else that's going to hold it back in as far as what type of market it reaches. I don't think it's going to have a great market saturation. I think most of the people that are going to get this are going to be real tech fiends who have to have the best of the best, the newest of the new, and real hardcore Xbox fans that like just will upgrade. And I don't think they'll reach a whole lot of a new audience. I don't think this is a system that's going to get a lot of people to buy their first Xbox One. There will be some, but I don't think it's going to be very many. I don't think it's going to push. And especially when you don't have exclusives, again, Every little category, every little detail kind of puts that target audience in a smaller and smaller box and I just don't, I don't see it making a huge splash. I see it being something that gradually over the course of a few years a lot of people drift towards and slowly upgrade as time moves on and more and more games get improvements using that hardware and as the price kind of comes down I see in the future that being a slow build but I don't see it at making like a huge splash really